Hello my beautiful, wonderful, amazing audience. Welcome or welcome back to this channel. How are you doing today? Because you look fantastic. So today, uh, this is a video that literally no one asked for and I don't see anybody ever asking for, but it's my channel and I don't care. I want to do this, so that's what we're doing. Let me adjust the lighting a little bit. Is that better? I mean, I guess. So there are two purposes to today's video. So number one, I just wanted to show you uh, my fidget toy collection and what my favorite things are, why I prefer some things over others, uh, because I feel like it might be helpful to some of you out there. Um, if you're, what is happening? If you are looking into getting fidget toys or, you know, just whatever, you want kind of like a fidget toy review. Um, also, just to kind of help some stigma a little bit, I know I'm just like one teeny tiny person and, you know, my thoughts and feelings probably don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but anything I can do to maybe help you out, that's all I care about. If I, if I can help at least one person, I can die happy. Um, so this all kind of started, um, let's take it back to about circa 2016, 2017. Uh, if you remember, that's where like the fidget spinner thing absolutely blew out of proportion. People were collecting them, people were selling Selling them. They were absolutely everywhere. You could walk into Go Mart and buy fidget spinners. They were all over the place. And at that time, I had just gotten my job at Hot Topic and I was also working a second job right next door to Hot Topic. And it was a virtual reality arcade because it was when uh, virtual reality started to take off and uh, the HTC Vive had just come out. And that was some of the equipment that we worked with in the arcade. Also, just as some extra cash, we sold a variety of fidget spinners and light up shoes and things like that and it was a cute store I liked it um worst job I've ever had in my life I quit the second I got my promotion at Hot Topic I was Audi 530 horrible experience <laughs> But I appreciate the the experience and perspective I gained from that job, as I do with every job I've had. Still wouldn't recommend it. So during that time, um, it was really great because although I had a bit of understanding of myself, uh, I've gained a lot more perspective over the years. And uh, that was such a wonderful time in my life because for once, I did not feel the need to mask myself. I wasn't embarrassed about my traits and my mannerisms. I could sit there and fidget and play with the spinners all damn day because everybody was doing it regardless of, you know, if they had any sort of, you know, whatever. It wasn't completely limited to those with like autism or ADHD or anything like that. Just everybody was participating and it was sort of a movement and nobody was embarrassed or ashamed. Everybody just had their little fidget toys going about their day. And it was great because I'm like, finally, you know, I don't feel so singled out or so weird, you know? I've spent my entire life just completely masking all of my personality and my mannerisms and it is getting so fucking exhausting that now I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm an adult. Despite the hindrance in uh, both my mental and emotional development, I, I will never truly like be an adult in my brain, but I do realize I am an adult and I am sick and fucking tired of just pretending and trying so hard to act my age or do what, you know, an adult should do. So I'm at the point where I'm like, fuck it. I need toys. I need something to mess with. I need something to help my brain focus. And if I'm doing something that's weird, I'm just going to let myself do the weird thing. Like, who fucking cares? Just live your life. Uh, if you're anything like me, I mean, it's not our fault that our brain is different or we developed a certain way. There, we didn't ask for this. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, so this is your sign. Just go out there, be your most authentic self, you know, no matter what it is, not just fidget toys. This goes for everything. Like me, I'm a, I'm a flappy hand person. If I get excited, my hands shake. If I get upset, my hands shake. I'm always walking around like this and I always got so made fun of 
for doing that when I was growing up. But you know, now if I, if I, I flap my wings and I fly away, that's what we're doing that day. So I just, I really don't give a shit. So uh, let's get started with my favorite toys. So I'm gonna start with like my least favorites and work my way up to my absolute favorites. So starting with my least favorites, these aren't necessarily fidget toys per se, but uh, I do like these a lot. So I have a lot of these little uh, Neko Dongo bean bags. They sell them books a million online. Hot Topic, whatever. These, um, this one came from Hot Topic. A couple of them came from Books a Million. I have a few. Um, but these I played with a lot when I worked at the Virtual Reality Arcade because I can just kind of... They have like a good... They're very light, but they have a little bit of weight to them because they are bean bags. This one is obviously my most beloved because look how dirty it is compared to like this one. Um, so I would just sit there all day and just like toss it around and play with it and you know, it's got a little squish to it. So uh, this is something that I keep right here above my desk and I mess with it quite a bit. It's just something different and it's cute. So it gives my brain a lot of serotonin, makes me happy and it's, it's just, it's a good time. Um, it's small, it's easy to just throw in your bag to mess with something on the go. Nobody's really going to think twice about it because it's just like a little stuffed cat. You know what I mean? Very cool. Next, sorta in the same type of vibe, I have like these little plush squishies. They're like fabric stuffed animal type deal on the outside, um, but on the inside they have a like slow rise, like squishy body. So those are very satisfying. I'm very picky about my squishies. Um, so like I have a few of these that were just like little surprise ones that came in like a like a blind box sort of deal and they're super cute but they're not the kind of squishy i like like they don't have enough pressure or rise to them they're just very kind of cheap and basic super cute to display but it's not something i'm really going to reach for um i also hate the kind of stress balls that are just they're really firm and they're like hard to squeeze i want something that's super soft and easy um, for like my hands to kind of melt into if that makes sense everything is about texture for me i i look for very specific textures and if it's not the texture i want i'm never going to touch it i'm sure somebody out there can relate right i'm not all by myself in that. The same thing goes with food. So one thing I get made fun of for a lot is I absolutely love marshmallow peeps. Um, they do not taste good, but uh, I like that marshmallow texture. I like the texture of the marshmallow with like the, the granules of the sugar and um, I don't know. So if you're wondering why I'm obsessed with peeps, that's why I like peeps. It's entirely a texture thing. The texture pleases me. So yeah, lots of fun. Um, I will get like regular squishies, like ones that aren't covered in fabric like this, if they are this exact texture on the outside. Um, I don't spend a lot of like, money on squishies just because um, I go through them really really fast so if I find like super cute ones I know they're gonna get destroyed within like two days I'm also a picker um, so that's why my hands always look gross I like sit there and peel my skin off um, so if I do have that's why I do like these ones that are have this fabric layer over it because I can't pick at it because I will sit there and the squishies I will rip apart and there's no stopping it. I would love to have control over my brain to be able to not destroy the things I pay money for, uh, but there's no helping it. So next in line, um, this is something I find very satisfying. Again, not a fidget toy. This is a Hello Kitty one, but just slap bracelets. Slap bracelets in general. I just love to sit there and mess with. Again, I don't reach for them a lot because I will break them. I will sit there and fidget them absolutely to death until they snap in half and they're no longer functional. Um, so this one's cute. This one I just use for like display purposes in my room. But I didn't have another slap bracelet for reference. But it is something I like to mess with a lot. That particular interest came from, well, when I was a kid and I would get slap bracelets. I would do the same thing. I would fidget them until I broke them. Um, but that was back before any of us even had a concept of like, you know, so, um, but recently, semi-recently, one of my supervisors at work, uh, I was sitting there and, you know, I was, I was picking, picking really bad. Um, we always make sure to have band-aids on hand because I make myself bleed at least twice a day from peeling my skin off. 
And so I was sitting there and I was picking and my supervisor's like, oh, quit that. Like, stop it. And I'm like, I, I can't help it. I, I don't know what to do with my hands. And he was like, okay, like, let me go help you with that. And he brought back a little slap bracelet that we got. It was probably for like HP or something. Like all, all these brands that we sell and work with in Best Buy, they send us like PR type things, you know, for product and stuff. But he went and brought me back that little slap bracelet. So I had something to mess with. And um, he told me like, don't be embarrassed. Like feel free if you need to bring like your anything to fidget with while you're working, like I get it. And that was like, the kindest gesture I've ever experienced in my life and it was like that moment where I'm like thank god I came and worked here because I've never felt like so understood or appreciated in my life fantastic man so yeah I, I do um we have a few at work that we'll mess with but yeah I try to avoid things that I know I'm going to break because I don't want to break them next within the squishy aspect um I recently got some of these little unicorns. They're squishy unicorns. They have like the water beads in them. I have an immense fascination with water beads. Again, it's the texture. Um, but I had three of these and I'm down to this very last one because obviously, again, I break stuff. I need like industrial fidget toys that are not going to break on me because I absolutely will destroy them. So my thing with these, how I broke the other ones is I kind of try to burst the water beads because I, I i love water beads but like i'll sit there and pinch them and like till they explode this is the weirdest video i've ever made i'm so sorry you are getting to know me as a person because it's embarrassing but yeah, so I have a habit, I'll, I'll sit here and I'll try to like squish the water beads and obviously that's going to end up like poking a lot of holes in this. So eventually these just kind of burst in my hand. Um, so I do like it. It's very satisfying. Again, I love the texture. I love the way the water beads feel in my hand, at least for an extent, because after a while sitting here messing with it, I, I kind of get overstimulated with the feeling of the water beads on my palm and it starts to you know, and then I have to put it down and get something else. But at first I like the texture with it. Even sitting here doing this video, it's starting to, I can feel like the tingle in my fingertips. So I, I'm putting that down now. Um, so yeah, I like that one. It's there good just to have for backup, but it's not my favorite one. I'm going to reach for all the time. Something I do reach for quite a bit. I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to place this in this video because I feel like it's neck and neck with my putties, but I'll go ahead and show you this. So this is a infinity cube. I think it's called, um, classic fidget cubes that, you know, have like the little joystick and the buttons and the little clicker. I'm not super into those. I don't really have a thing with like clicking. I'm not like a pin clicker or anything like that. I will on occasion, but I, I look for very specific stimulations and fidgets. So like any kind of clicking button, um, I'm not super into. I used to have a fidget cube, like one of the classic fidget cubes, but I really never messed with it. It didn't do anything for me, but I recently found this. So this one's like a little loose, um, but it makes it super easy to flip through with one hand. Um, so this is one that I constantly have in my hand at work. I like the noise of it. Over time, uh, if you have a lot of overstimulation with noises, um, it can get kind of annoying because it's a little loud, um, but it just keeps flipping on through. And you can just sit here and do this forever. So I love it because it's just, it never ends. Um, some people, this kind of stresses them out just because uh, with the cube shape, you think it's going to be like a Rubik's cube and there's going to be an end to it and you can complete a task, if that makes sense. Um, so some people don't like this. I like it a lot. So I guess it just depends on which side of that kind of spectrum you're on. Also, it's pretty colors. It matches me right now, sort of. But yeah, I like this a lot and it took some practice to do. I can do it with both hands now. So it was kind of fun to practice it and get the hang of it. But it is easy to sit there and hold with one hand. Uh, while I'm sitting there talking to customers, yes, I'll be sitting there playing with my fidget toys while I'm with the customer. What are they going to do? I'm giving them the information they need. That's all that matters. 
it shouldn't matter what I'm doing with my hands, you know. 10 out of 10. I bought this for like $10 on Amazon. I was actually looking for different fidget cubes, maybe ones with more variety, when this popped up. So, but I think it's just called an infinity cube. Uh, but it's a pretty popular one. A lot of people are into it. Maybe you'll like it too. It's definitely one of my favorites. I keep it in my bag at all times, uh, so it's always with me. So next we're gonna get into my putties. I always loved, I used to just keep like modeling clay around me all the time because I always like to sit there and squish it and I never really like understood why. And then as the years have gone on, you see a lot more of like a uh, stimulation putties and stuff. Like there's the uh, crazy Aaron's thinking putty and things like that. So I never realized that that was a thing that other people did or looked for. I didn't, you know what I mean? I thought I just, I knew I'd love to play with clay and play-doh and just sit there and squish it, but I didn't realize that's like part of a thing that a lot of people experience. Um, so uh, first I have this one. This is by play-doh and, um, it's very, I buy a lot of different putties and like try to keep a variety of the texture. So this one's a little bit more stiff. It's harder. It's more rubbery. It's very similar to like a silly putty type texture, but maybe just a little more stiff. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't have as much like stretch to it. You can stretch out a little bit, but you can also just kind of rip it cleanly, if that makes sense. Just to kind of give you an idea of how rubbery it is. This one has like little plastic sprinkles in it which is super cute. Love sprinkles. There's also a lot of it. Like this is a big handful. Um, so I like this because I can just take like a little bit of it and mess with it. Or I can sit here with like the whole thing. Uh, I just like to stretch it out and fold it over and twist it. Just kind of mess with it. Um, so this I'll pick up a lot while I'm just sitting here at my desk, like watching YouTube or something. And I need something to do with both of my hands. Whereas if I'm actually working on something and I need a hand free, I'll kind of reach for the, the different sensory putty or something like that, or maybe just take a small chunk, if that makes sense to you. It all just depends on what I feel like I need at the time. Uh, so this one I like a lot. I like the smell of it. It does smell like Play-Doh. Like it has that classic Play-Doh smell, which is a very nostalgic smell. Uh, it's very comforting to me, so... Um, while a lot of people might think it smells like shit and they hate it, I, I love the smell of Play-Doh. So that's just like an extra aspect for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to put this down. Every time I pick it up, it's so hard to put it down. Okay, let's just squish this back in the container and I'll show you the next one. So I've never had the Crazy Aaron's uh, Thinking Putty before. I know that one's really popular. This is the Sensory Putty. Um, so it's like berry scented. Oh gosh, I haven't opened it in a while, so. It still kind of smells like berry. It still has that, um, the smell is very specific. It is more of like a silly putty type smell, like mixed with berries. It was a lot more potent with that berry scent when I first got it, but obviously now I've messed with it quite a bit, so the smell kind of disappears over time. You get more of like that rubbery, silly putty smell. But this, first of all, it's like a lot less. It's a lot smaller to fit into your hand. This one is a lot softer of a texture than like the Play-Doh one. Um, it's a lot more stretchy and it kind of just like melts down a little bit more, if that makes sense. Like if I sit here and hold it over time, it's just gonna like, until it falls, if that makes sense. It's like a lot more moldable. It's just really soft and like a more cloud-like texture compared to the other one. So this one I actually take to work with me. I try not to mess with it a lot just because it's a putty and like you need to be like, I I only use it like, um, like on my breaks or if I'm working the front register where I'm really not touching anything and I'm sanitizing everything constantly. Um, I don't touch it unless I've like washed or sanitized my hands first if I have it at work because we are in a pandemic, but it is small and it's like more easy to mess with while I'm there. But most of my putties I try to leave at home just for the sanitation aspect. All my other toys, very easy to sanitize. But this one, not so much, but I, I do like it. I do like to have it with me all the time. It's definitely one of my favorites. I love the texture. I love how it smells, 10 out of 10, um, but it still has nothing on the next few toys that I show you. Okay, next we have a classic bop, the fidget spinner. 
Um, again, I love that era just because this was really always one of my favorites. Until recently, I didn't think I would ever find a fidget that I enjoy more than the fidget spinner. This one specifically, this is a metal one that I got when I worked at that virtual reality arcade. First of all, it's pink. It's very pretty. It made me think of like Sailor Moon or something. It's a little worn down and beaten up now because it's like a million years old, but um these little parts the weights in them are like a gold color the paint's starting to get all scratched up but this one um the weights in it are like nice and heavy it's got a good weight to it it's not super loud it's louder than it used to be the bearings are really smooth on it so this one is super duper satisfying i was never a fan of like the really cheap fidget spinners and this is obviously a really good one because it's lasted this long because i got it in like 2017 so this is like four years old now. So this one I like a lot. Obviously it's just real easy to mess with. It's not super distracting. Every now and then I'll be at work and I have it in my hand and you get a lot of people that look at me like, what fucking year did I walk into? But I, I don't care. I, it is what it is. Do you want an HDMI cord or not? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I will always love the fidget spinner. I don't care if it looks outdated or goofy or whatever the fuck. Look at me. I'm goofy, you know? It's just whatever you need to help yourself stem however you need to stem. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed about, you know? So if you want to break out your old fidget spinner and you were embarrassed, uh, here's your sign. Just, just do it. They're so much fun. I love them so much. Uh, this is my favorite. I had a really, like... <laughs> bad meltdown at work the other day because I had like it fell out of my pocket somewhere and I could not find it anywhere and I like cried in the bathroom but one of my co-workers found it and they returned it to me so that's good. While I'm at work I have a tendency to keep a variety of toys with me like in my bag and just different stuff in my pocket because I can't even sit there and like play with the same thing all day. I have to like switch them out or else I like get bored and I lose focus and then like I can't be bothered to do any part of my job. So the easy, small, to compact, to like fit into your pocket. So that's another reason why I like that. Uh, same with the cube because it flattens down. So that's really easy to just slide into your pocket somewhere. Portability is something I really look for in my fidget toys. Okay, so now we are to my absolute number one favorite things ever. Again, I didn't think I would love anything more than the fidget spinner until these guys were brought back from the dead. I didn't know they still made these, um, but we have the Tangles. So, um, this one's my favorite, obviously, because it has the pink in it, and I, I like the clear... Um, this one's the actual Tangle brand. Like, he's the real deal. So this one runs a lot smoother. Um, so this one's the one that I keep with me 24-7. These are off-brand ones. I ordered them on Amazon. Uh, I got a pack of like six of them and I took them to work and gave them to my other super fidgety co-workers to help them out. Also, you know, I, I just thought it would be a, a nice thing to do because I know how it is and I know that sometimes it gets embarrassing to admit that you really need these things. So I kind of made it like a very, uh, hey, look how cool this is. It's a lot of fun. You can wear it as a bracelet. Like, you can just keep it with you. It's like, it'll be like our, our friendship bracelets or something. Just to kind of make them feel better about it. So, yeah. So these ones, um, yeah, not as smooth. Don't like these off-brand ones as much, but they are still a lot of fun. And it's just nice to have extras. They unclick, so you can, like, link them together. You can make, like, a really big one. You can make it smaller to wear it as a bracelet. This one, again, is the one I keep with me. It's like the the joints are a lot smoother on it, um, so it's just really more fluid to mess with. This one I really don't get bored with that much. I can sit here and do this all day, and trust me, I do. Um, and then I like it just because when I'm not using it, I can just kind of take it, and it'll pretty much stay there. You can just kind of wrap it up leave it on your wrist and like go about your business so that way it's always there with me and uh, I don't have to worry about it falling out of my pocket or losing it somewhere it's just always right there on my wrist and then when I <laughs> need something it's just right there I can just pop it off and we are good to go um so 10 out of 10 absolutely all my fidget toys are a 10 out of 10 but this one's like a like a 15 out of 10 like, my top favorite thing ever. So these guys came out, I think in like the late 80s. Um, they were very popular. 
in the 90s or the early 2000s. They were kind of like the original fidget toy um, back before anybody really knew a lot about these things that make us fidgety but it was sold as something that you know it's a lot of fun you can mess with it it'll improve focus and you know this and that but yeah so this was like kind of probably one of the first commercially sold fidget toys and i had no idea they still made them i remembered them i'm sure looking at it some of you this is like delving into the deepest pits of your memory like you you look at it and you're like oh yeah but you can't quite place it because that's how i was i had a um a friend that was a customer when i worked at hot topic and she came in with well this exact one <laughs> pretty much. And I was like, oh my god, I remember those. I th The whole time she's sitting there talking to me, like, I'm trying to focus on what she's saying, but I just could not focus because I just, she had this and she was sitting there messing with it and I just kept staring at that. And the whole time I'm just like, I, I want it, I, I want it, I want it. <laughs> um, so I bought a million of them, but I only use this one. I don't know. But they're great. They, they're just... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but if you're seeing this right now and that same thing's going through your brain, you're like, whatever it is, I have to have it at this very moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. This one I found on Amazon. This one was like eight bucks, uh, which could be worse. And then I got these like off-brand ones, a pack of six for like 20 bucks, which might be out of your budget for fidget toys but to me it was worth it because I got to give them out to everybody and it made me really happy and it made them really happy so definitely well worth the price um this one yeah I would easily pay a hundred dollars for this thing that's how much I love it like literally it can have every bit of my money so I always have this and it's fan freaking tastic and I guess that's pretty much it oh well there is one more thing I, I debated showing this because it's a lot more eh, but Again, there's, there's no shame here. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Whatever. So, um, the last thing I have is my jewelry. Some of you may have seen this, like, uh, these kind of things on TikTok or whatever. Um, so if you have a, uh, if you stem by, like, chewing on things, if you're a chewer, uh, me, obviously, I'm a nail biter. I pick, I, I will chew on literally whatever random object I find that looks appetizing to put into my mouth. Uh, so this thing has been a lifesaver. Mine looks horrible because I, I haven't had it long, but I've already, like, really violently chewed it up. Because I, I don't always just, like, sit here and chew on things. Like, I will straight bite into it and destroy it. Yeah, so... I'm already due for another one, but all this is chewable. This right here. Um, it also looks really, like, cute. So, uh, you can find some super cute ones. They're very stylish to wear. This one, I thought it was, like, super kawaii. Matches a lot of my stuff. Uh, I normally just keep it around the house or wear it around the house. I don't really take it out, mainly because we're in a pandemic and something, this is something that I really need to keep clean because it goes into my mouth. So I don't really want to take it outside of the house. But it's great, especially when I'm sitting here editing videos and I feel the need to... Usually I, I eat a lot of snacks when I edit and stuff, so this has really helped with that because it's really, at the end of the day, it's just completely oral fixation. Um, so this really helps with that. It's nice and firm, but it's not like too firm. Like it is just very satisfyingly chewy. So that's great. Found this on Amazon. It was like 15 bucks. These guys can get kind of expensive, but you can find all kinds of them. What is the brand? This brand is Munchables. So, um, super fun. I think this one was meant for children, but who cares? Uh, I'm not hurting anybody, so. Highly recommend this if you are you are a chewer. Um, it's fantastic. That's really it. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was kind of like a weird random video, but hopefully uh, this helps you guys out and helps you choose, you know, something that might be helpful for you. Yeah, I, I definitely recommend anything I have here. You can easily find pretty much anywhere on the internet. I order a lot of stuff from Amazon because I get the two, two day... Free two-day shipping. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Have fun. Be safe. Like both ways before you. I love you. Have fun. Be safe. Like both ways before you cross the street. And I will see you next Monday. Bye. Hey, before we end today's video, I am looking for recruits to join Ancaria. 
What is Ancaria, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you, Ancaria is a survival multiplayer server that me and my friends came up with, and it's pretty lax. We just like to have fun. Uh, you can build whatever you want. You can just enjoy the game. Have different features such as an MMO mod that can let you level up specific skills in the game. And we also have different various structures around the place in case you aren't the best builder and you just want to get on and already have a house built and just play the game. So I'll show you that right over here. It's pretty relaxed. We're all pretty cool. We like to talk on Discord so you can join the Discord as well and chat with me and my friends as we play. Uh, you can build whatever you want. You can just play the game. You can explore. Just whatever you do, please don't grief the bees. If you're interested in joining the server, just leave a comment below or DM me on any of my social media links. And so far, it is absolutely free to join. So just let me know and I can't wait to see you there. Bye guys.